I'm Ted Brecken from Oregon State University, and I'll be uh, leading and uh, also organize most of the material for the workshop. A number of other people involved, though, we have uh, myself and Ed. Eduardo Cortia Sanchez. Eduardo's not here yet, but he'll talk in a little bit on some topics. Uh, Jin Sub Kim will also talk with us on cybersecurity issues. And then uh, Bob Bass is our Portland State lead on this project. Um, also uh, did a tremendous job getting this room together and uh, getting all these facilities ready. And then some other speakers we have lined up. Leon Kempner, BPA. Leon's here. Where'd Leon go? He's here somewhere. And maybe stepped out. And then uh, Yumai Wong, also from, um, from Dogami, will speak as well. So why this workshop? Where did this come from? Uh, but a year ago, Eduardo and I wrote a proposal to the Oregon Talent Council. Um, it was a $700,000 project uh, to fund uh, a variety of activities, but largely based on training the Oregon workforce. It's just finishing up right now, rent from June to June. Uh, partners on this project are us at Oregon State, uh, Portland State University, and then our utility partners, Central Lincoln PUD, Pacific Power, and Portland General Electric. And so the key, key outcomes of this project are one, we did an on-campus course at Oregon State University. I was the main instructor for that, we just finished it. I just finished that up. Another is this online asynchronous course that we'd be developed this summer that will come online at the end of the summer. So that's meant for practicing professionals. It's an online course you can take. It's not, through, it's not for OSU credit. You can get CEUs for it. It'll probably be about 10 hours of seat time. And it's just, you can just take it at your leisure. It will be some of the material from this, it will be some other material, right? But it's aimed at people that are out there that aren't gonna come to campus for a class, right? But wanna take, um, wanna, wanna learn more, wanna do uh, more. And there'll be more technical details in that. There'll be some, we'll actually work with some power flows and things like that. So I'll be developing it this summer, and then this will be online at the end of summer. Um, and of course, the other big third outcome is this, this short course. That was one of the outcomes of the project, and, and that's why we're here. So taught today. And then there's also a graduate students are also involved in this. We have one of those graduate students here, Adam, is one of the graduate students that was involved in this project here also to help me out. Yeah. So that's why we're here and that's what's, that's what's funding this effort. Yeah. Well, another thing I want to mention is the Cascadia Lifelines program. So this, who in here has heard of the Cascadia Lifelines program? Okay, a couple people. That's an effort through Oregon State University. This short course is not officially under that umbrella but we're, st we're sort of next to it, and so I want to make sure that people are aware of it. Cascadia Lifelines program was started at Oregon State University by the now the dean, Scott Ashford. Uh, the current director is Dan Cox, and there's a number of industrial members of this board, like Bonneville Power, Portland General Electric, a number of other organizations, and then some associate members as well, like Eugene Water and Electric Board. And the goal of, EWA, or the goal of CLIP is to pool this money that they pay for fees and dues, and then use that money to fund research and other projects and things like that that are of mutual benefit to all members of, of the community. So I just wanted to point that out, that, that the, the, what we're here and what we're talking about is not strictly under CLIP, but CLIP is there. And going forward, um, we'll be doing more and more with CLIP. Um, so if you're, if you're interested in being engaged at what's going on at the universities uh, with regard to resilience, um, certainly, uh, you know, follow up with me for more information or Dan or whatever and, and see if you can get involved with CLIP. That, that's an excellent mechanism to be engaged with what's going on and be engaged with the community that's working more and more on this. Just an example, uh, some of the projects that CLIP does, uh, there's a whole bunch of them, but just an example, there's a project with eWeb, um, tested the, the resilience of some of these uh, older concrete um, distribution poles and they did, uh, subjected them to cyclical, cyclical loading in the lab. Here's a picture of what that looks like then. You see the cracking on this. Um, so uh, just subjected it to stresses and then to see uh, how that cracks and uh, at what point that fails. Uh, that's, uh, that's on the structural side, um, but you know, we can do stuff on the electrical side as well in terms of power system studies and things like that. So just, just to be aware of, of, of CLIP and just an example of some of the things that they do. So I'll talk a little bit about, uh, also just a little bit about us at, at Oregon State University. So in the energy systems faculty, there's four of us. There's myself and Eduardo, who will be here in a little bit, and then Annette and Julia. And the areas that we study are power electronics, power systems, electric motors, the traditional three pillar areas of energy systems. And then within that, uh, we do some hydropower work. We've had a number of students that have had uh, fellowships through the Hydro Research Foundation. Uh, we do a work on electric vehicles. We do a lot of renewable energy work, so uh, covering all, all different types, and then we also study integration of that. Um, some protection energy storage work and then some resilience work as well. And so the lab for us is the Wallace Energy Systems and Renewables Facility. 
which is this lab. And uh, some people may not know about this, but it's a tremendous resource that we have here locally. It's actually one of the highest power university-based energy systems labs in the US. It used to be a high voltage lab. It actually used to do corona testing and insulator failure and stuff like that. Um, it was revamped though in the mid 90s by its namesake, Alan Wallace, who passed away um, around 2005 and it was named for him, but, but this lab was really rebuilt as a, as a motors focused lab. But we have a, a lot of resources in here for any kind of power systems work. Uh, 300 horsepower motor test bed, and we've got our own dedicated three quarter of a megawatt feed from the utility. Um, we have a lot of other transformers and other equipment as well. And I also should mention that we have a PMU network. We actually, our, our campus is fairly highly instrumented with PMUs. We have five around campus, and we have two more that are currently, um, that are currently going in. And we're using that for a, number of, for a number of research projects related to PMUs. Um, so that's part of, our, part of our test bed. So just to be aware of, of that resource.